back. It's the final day of the Hyundai 49er, 49er FX and NACRA 17 World Championships right here in Auckland. My name's Anna Wilcox and this here is Jesse Took. It's the final day. Jesse, what does it mean? Final day and the breeze is blowing, so it's going to be good action out on the water. But look, two big races this morning. Teams are going to be jostling it out to see who's going to get into that top 10 and into that medal race. And currently in the 49ers, there are three Kiwis in it. What does that mean? Look, our Kiwi boys are sailing well. Berlin and Chuka are on the top, but it's going to be interesting. Maybe we could see three of the Kiwi boats get up into that top five. Well, my fingers and toes are crossed, but let's find out. As we come into the countdown, it looks clear this time. We're underway. First race on Super Sunday. And Oscar Gunn and Logan Dunning Beck getting away right in the middle of the line there with a great start. Just to lure of them is Peter Burling and Blair Chuk as well. So Kiwi's getting away in a, in a nice position early on here. Something happened with Burling and Tuke there. They actually stopped. So Oh, I think they've had a problem. Burling and Tuke have had a problem. They were up in the hunt, and I think they've broken a tiller extension. So you can see Burling. Yep, they've had a mechanical issue. And it is eight from France who get in there first. That is Lucas Ruhl and Amaros, followed by GBR. Austria third. They have broken their tiller extension. They did that on, their, on the attack near the top mark. And here are the projected rankings as we sit here now. So it would still be Burling and Took because they were carrying an 11th place. But they're going to have to work now to try and make a repair for the next race. This one's over for them. As we approach this bottom gate, it's the Austrians who are going to have right of way to go around that right hand mark as we look at it. And the French are going to break to the left. So as they come down to the bottom of the course, you can go around either of those two marks. And we've seen plenty of times this week, the selection is so important. There's big gains to be made. There's Burling and Took. <laughs> they are still having difficulty. They're still trying to repair. This is going to turn into a major for the next race. There's not much of this one left. So it's absolutely crucial to monitor the position of Germany 6 in relation to the overall score. As they come in to the top mark, it is France in the lead. They'll set up here. They will turn to the left. Then they'll hoist their Jenica and head down on down. I've oh, still got one and in. Two more tacks to the top mark. Didn't quite get there. So that'll open up an opportunity for GBR. Have they done enough? Second tack complete. It's close at the top mark. France. GBR second. As they head off down to the finish. So how we are. That's the projected rankings as we see it at the moment with um, with New Zealand staying in the lead. Coming down to the finish, it will be France 8 taking first race of the day. Race 7 goes to France. Have a look at the points and uh, what impact did it have with Burling and Took having a gear breakages, did not finish. Still 10 points ahead with Heil and Plusel who made a good comeback. They were deep, but they got up to ninth. And we're underway. Who do we like? Clear start. Clear start. Clear start. Clear it's Burling and Tuke who started on port there. We'll see them duck behind. These boats going out to the starboard side of the racetrack. So nice start there for the Kiwis. They're going to have a great lane to get out to the right. But it's this Netherlands duo and they've got the Germans just underneath them. So this is uh, definitely one to watch here. But it is a drag race over towards the right. That leading group started on port right at the committee boat. Advantage at the moment to the Netherlands. Berling and Took we see just tacking underneath the race leaders, heading out to that left-hand side of the course now. So big moment in the race here, first cross. Yeah, that was quite interesting there that uh, Berling and Took elected to really come uh, to lure of the Netherlands. Now, effectively by default, that meant that uh, Heil needed to continue on uh, on port and then go and stack up on the windward side of the Netherlands. So Burling and Tuka playing the, the conservative game. At the top mark first, it is Germany, Heil and Plusel. Next, it'll be uh, Lamprey from the Netherlands. Then it'll be Burling and Tuka. 
Yeah, He's that's... trying to find a gap. You'll see him slot in just here ahead of the British team, but such a tight spot there and a tricky manoeuvre for the Kiwis. Yeah, that's the price you pay when you overlap. Oh, and in the water. So Logan dunning -Beck missed his uh, side strap. He's in the water. It's all coming unraveled today for the New Zealanders. Oh, and he's Logan... broken a tiller extension as well, Peter. You can oh. see there there's a... It is going pear-shaped for the young Kiwi. You see a replay of him coming in. They're in a very tight spot, like we said. No rights there, so they had to throw attack in really close to the mark. And as Dunning Beck went out on the trapeze, you can see him slip, and he just bends that tiller extension around the wing, and it just cracked. So fragile. At the bottom mark, it is Harlem and Plusel. They come round the right-hand mark. The right hand was their friend on the first upwind, and they'd like a wee bit more of that. Burling is taking a bit of a punt here and i feel uncomfortable I'm with the leading group going hard right and burling and tuka going left up the rangatoto channel with the tide coming in good upwind by the netherlands so come round thomas plusel goes in and jibes there So Netherlands come round in second position. Coming down to the line, it is Eric Heil, Thomas Plusel. They go over the line. There's the finish. So here we are. This is overall at the end of the fleet race. We've got the middle race to go. It is New Zealand in the lead, and there's eight points in it. Wow, what a morning of drama for our 49er fleet. Equipment failure in two Kiwi boats. Yeah, look, really difficult start for the guys. Berlin and Chook snapped their tiller extension in that first race and they ended up at the back of the fleet. Fortunately, though, that was their discard and they just bagged an 11th in that race. And then the second one, Dunning, Beck and Gunn. It happened again, so Kiwi's having some rotten luck this morning plenty of drama but what does this mean going into the middle race fortunately berlin and cheek bounce back in that second race of the day and they still hold an eight point lead over the germans and what that means heading into this double points middle race is that all they need to do is finish within three boats of the germans and the boys will secure gold well so much at stake but let's find out how they went Ten seconds to go. This is the medal race, the last race of the 49er Worlds here in Auckland. Here As we, we come They're down off. towards the start, they've They're started... They're going to get a better start than Pete. Good start by Germany. Down to Lord of them will be Burling and Toot. Great start by the Germans, and we're underway. This is the medal race. Who's it going to be? So it's, it's Heil and Plusel to windward of Burling and Toot. First blood to the Germans. So at the moment, it is Heil, Burling and Took who are heading up on the first windward beat. France coming across, across coming up. Oh, Peter Burling's fallen. He's fallen off the side of the boat. Uh, is the pressure getting to the New Zealanders? They rolled into attack and missed the foot straps. So that's a little error by New Zealand. Here's the tack. Goes through the tack, slipped. Oh, he wow. did well to hang on there. He did, he real did well, well to not hang to on there. Uh, lose the boat. And not break a hiking stick, and, 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 and. So. Yep. So it's Diego Boot, boat in. Diego Mara out in the front. Burling and Took with that bad tack, missing the foot straps in the tack. They uh, trail the fleet. Here we go, um, lots of boats laying the top mark. First, first big moment. So at the top mark, it's Spain in the lead, Netherlands second, and Logan dunning Beck looks like they might be close to third as they come round. So the other Kiwi crew are having a good one, then Germany, then Austria. Next it will be Denmark. There's GBR, so Heil and Plusel are in fifth position. And right now, that's probably enough for them to, over, to overtake the New Zealanders. So it's all to do for Burling and Took. They'll need to put the hammer down on this downwind leg. There's no holding back. 
They're back in ninth position. They need to get closer than that. Burling and Teak uh, at the back of the field. Heil and Plusel mid-pack. Two points in it at the moment. Advantage Germany. Can the New Zealanders also come through the free? So Heil, to me, is up into second. He's had an absolute blinder on the downwind. He's passed three boats on the downwind, so Heil showing exceptional downwind speed. It's the bottom mark. Looks like Logan Dunningbeck has uh, also had a very strong downwind left. So first, Spain. The next boat in will be New Zealand, closely followed by Germany. So that's the two leading boats. That's who we're dealing with. Boatin, Heil and Plusel, Dunningbeck and Gunn, Burling. Now, right now, if that maintains, Burling and Took have actually had a blinder on the first half of the second one would be. Here's Germany, also in a lot of wind. They go slightly windward heel to keep that lured wing out of the water as they come Ooh, round. Yeah, that good, was close. Good boat control. Then it will be Dunningbeck. Hey, uh, nice, nice bold handling. And then it will be Burling and Took. Round they come. Yeah, just one boat between them now, so that's uh, that's an impressive display by uh, Pete and uh, Blair just to come back from basically yeah, so last at that top mark to, uh, to yeah. where they are now. Top mark, the New Zealanders at the moment are in the lead in the overall point standing. Fourth overall, but leading the regatta. It is Spain. There's the finishing line for... Uh, Boatin and Mara, they're going to take this one out. They've won the medal race. That will put them up to fourth overall for the medal race winner. Next, it is going to be Heil and Plusel. And barring a capsize, it'll put them in second place. As the Germans come down, big nose dive by Germany, but they've regained control. They still have to make They've got one jibing in here as they come across. There's Logan Dunningbeck. Oh, lovely jibe by Dunningbeck. He's going to snitch him on the line. So Logan Dunningbeck goes over the line uh, in second. And the New Zealanders, uh, just to windward, we have our world ch champions, Peter Burling and Blair Took. They've now won 5.49er world champions, and they snitch it here in Auckland. That's just an awesome display from where they were to where they ended up. That's just an awesome, awesome display. So here we've got the results. Such exciting stuff. Yeah, that's how it finished. The boys on top, Berlin and Chuk, so, so close in the end. Heil and Pusil, you got to hand it to them. They did all they could. Nearly got the boys, but they didn't. Bloody good, mate. Yeah, brother. Hey, uh, well done. How <laughs> Unreal, unreal. I don't have too many more words than that. Yeah, that was some race. Um, that was epic conditions, and we obviously found ourselves back at start and then uh, fought our way forward, so now we're just over the moon. We don't uh, often get to race in front of our home crowd like this. So, so much of what we do is overseas, so it's just been a real honour to, to race in New Zealand to start with and then uh, yeah, to, to finish it like this and to win the World Championship, and the fifth one's uh, very, very special. Well, Pete, hold up that hand, mate, because that was the only thing holding you onto the boat there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, had a bit of practice in that in the first race, so no, it's uh, <laughs> not the ideal way to start, but it definitely made life hard for ourselves. But, you know, we managed to pull off uh, some pretty good jobs there at the end and, you know, some pretty top-end conditions in these boats. It's pretty hard and a uh, pretty st <laughs> unbelievable feeling to walk away with it. And you just had a good chat to the Germans there. They obviously pushed you all the way. It looked like a fun battle all week. Yeah, you know, we've had plenty of battles with the Germans over the years. You know, obviously the bronze medalists in Rio and, you know, very good, um, good team. So, no, it's been incredibly fun uh, racing them this week and uh, they've put together a hell of an event. Well, boys, congratulations. Pe plenty of people here uh, all cheering you on. We're all really proud of you. Well done. Yeah, thank you Thanks, very man. much. Stoked.
Wow, I don't even know where to start. That was so intense. Sorry, my shirt's wet. I hugged the boys when they came in. It was just all too much. Yeah, that was the most exciting medal race that I've ever seen. Normally they have it wrapped up well before the medal race, but they really put us through the ringer there. They sure did. It all came down to that final leg. The Austrians capsized. We thought it was them. It was intense. Yeah, absolutely. But they got it done. They just slowly chipped away and five-time world champs doesn't get any better than that. New Zealand has crowned its first world champions from this regatta, but it's not over yet. We've got the 49er FX gold medal race coming up. Yeah, it's a two-horse race at the moment between the Netherlands and Brazil. Whoever beats who will be the world champ, but our girls have a really good shot of getting a good race under the belt and maybe jumping onto that podium. All right, well, let's find out. I'm nervous. Let's get into it. We're in business and the first, here we go. So the Dutch number one coming over to the port end, starting on port, taking some sterns, comes run around the committee boat. So it is the Netherlands starting on port and heading right for uh, Brazil. Martine Grail, she's heading to the left. Germans look comfortably ahead, which isn't good news for the Kiwis. Remember, they needed to get three boats in between them and the Germans to get into that bronze position. But we can see Brazil there still back in eighth place. So currently as things are, Netherlands is the leading team. To the top mark for the first time, it is Lutz and Boyka from Germany in the lead. As they get up for the top mark, moving aft, just that foot in the strap to make sure we don't go over the handlebars. It's this transition from upwind to downwind that can be problematic. Germany in the lead. Making sure the boat's flat before they deploy the Jenica. Next, it will be GBR. It's Charlotte Dobson. As they come round again, trying to keep the boat on its feet. Next will be Denmark. Then it's the Netherlands, closely followed now by Brazil. These boats are really flat forward, so if uh, they nosedive like it to the end. Oh, problem! The race leader, just as I was talking oh, about it, no. it's the disaster for Lutz and Boyka. And it was what I talked about. They are very flat forward. If you nosedive and you get the timing wrong, you capsize. And it is a lead change. Netherlands are now in the lead. And Brazil, Brazil have, uh, Brazil oh. have had the mark. That will be it. It's the swan dive at the bottom mark gate. That will be the world championship done and dusted. It's an unforced error uh, due to the conditions at the bottom mark gate. And it was the uh, Martine Grail who made the absolute catastrophic mistake. Here's the first one. Bow stuck in, bow sprit, boat slows up, lured wing goes in the water. Good night, nurse. And uh, that wasn't the end of the drama. And the next one, as we look at the race leader, get round the wing mark. Uh, Brazil come in hot. They had gone slightly too far. And Martine Grail, you know, I might as well jump. But meanwhile, back at the front, it is beakering and do it. And they now will know what carnage happened at the bottom mark with Grail. And all they need to do now is sail it out. So at the top mark, it's the Netherlands. They lead. They lead the race. They are ahead overall for the 2019 49er FX. We're quite conservative on that jibe in terms of their Jenica. They need to sheet it on. They've sucked it away. Actually, I can understand that. They don't need to take any risks. They don't need to win this race. So they've uh, taken the Jenica down. This is quite smart. I think they might have gone a bit far on ley line as well. So they just know if they sail it out, they'll win the world championships. It will be Netherlands one. No heroics. So first over the line, it's GBR. Then we have coming through in second place in the middle. It will be... So third will go to the Netherlands. The Netherlands are the 2019 49er FX world champions. Whoa. And now the celebratory cap size. That was deliberate. But here are our winners. 
the team from the Netherlands. So let's just have a look at the results. So it is the Netherlands taking out the world championships. So that's Beckering and Duits from Martina Grail and Kahinya Kunza from Brazil. Well, how does it feel, Anna Marek, to be the 2019 49er FX World Champion? Beautiful 14 start. You came off on port, you picked the right hand side, and from there you just sat and watched the carnage happen behind you. How do you feel? Oh, it's amazing. We're super, super happy. I think all of us are smiling, and uh, it's been a very exciting and tense week. And, uh, it's amazing to finish it like this and we're super happy. Tell us a little bit about your pre-race strategy because you did start on port and it looked like a, a preset move. Yeah, well, it was quite windy and we thought let's sail our own race uh, first of all. We thought it would be a little bit gain on the right so we committed hard to the start and uh, I think it paid off. We were in the top and that's always nice in this windy stuff to have some space on the course. And then uh, when the Brazilians kept sides at the lured we were uh, Happy, but still like, okay, let's make sure we uh, we sail our own race and uh, don't make any mistakes. And uh, yeah, it worked out. It's great. We're underway and a beautiful start right down at the pin end, or at the committee boat end on port. We've got France 56 and it's a clear start. Chris, who do you fancy? Well, at the moment, Santiago Lange down at the pin end of the start line, the Argentinian, he got off and a great start but we've talked about the right hand side being strong and already we could see the Italians and the French charging out on this right hand side of the course and that group in the middle of uh, boats just that you see the weather there is also going to be in the mix so it's a complete drag race from here on in. So it will be Italy 26, Ruggiero Tita, Carolina Banti as they set up the Veraway set. Now it's all about uh, that balance between speed and seamanship. Yeah, you can see the skipper coming off the trapeze here as they go for oh. the fairway. So, jive set. Straight into a jive set. We shouldn't get too complacent because it's downwind where we've seen the action in terms of the ability to boats to nosedive and to capsize. Then it gets. Uh, a little more busy at the bottom mark. Next, it, into the bottom mark, it will be Spanish combination. Whoa, and a bit of a wheelie as the French come round behind them, 56. So at the top mark, this is the final race. It is Tita and Banti in the lead from Italy. They come round, they're looking at the set, looking to be tidy. She's the bucking Bronco, Italy in the lead. Oh, big sideways there, the boat foiled up, lost control of the bow, managed to regain it. And it is Bizarro and Senholt. And the, the Danes have just drive back over onto starboard here, Pete, so converging back close to the Italians who haven't given them much room at all. They're not on ley line though, uh, the, the Danes but they have to push the action. The Italians coming over the line, it'll be Vittorio Bizarro takes out the world. Blistering through, there they are. 2019 NACRA World Championships, just holding off the charging Danish team who will take the silver medal. So here are the results. It's Bizarro and Prescari first and uh, they take it out by three points by Sinholt and Lubeck, Water and, and Silver, Waterhouse and Darmanin take bronze. What a way to finish the regatta, the Nacro 17, that was intense. Yeah, the perfect way to the finish. The Italians doing exactly what they needed to do, fending off the Danes, fending off the Australians and they'll be stoked, world champs. Absolutely, and plenty of wind, so there was heaps of intense moments where they, they would come up on their foils and they would crash, but we didn't have any capsizes. Very surprising, no capsizes, right on the edge the whole time, but fortunately for the Italians, they kept it dry. What an incredible world championship has, it has been, but Jesse, what's been your favorite moment? Look, it's an easy one. Our boys, Berlin and Chute, getting it done, their fifth world champs, and for them, it was their favorite as well, and mine too. 
100% agree. Sorry, I've got the same one, but it's been an incredible week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the coverage.